Welcome to Bottling Day. Here we're going to show you the step-by-step -step process on how to bottle beer at your home or your apartment, even if you live in a studio apartment. First step is to put your carboy up on an elevated surface because once you move it, you want everything to settle down at the bottom. Do this about 30 minutes to an hour before you start bottling. That way you have the clearest beer ready to siphon. first rule of any bottling day, or let's say any homebrew day, is to start by cracking yourself a fresh homebrew. This one we brewed about three months ago, Holiday Spice Dale, and it's going to go great because it's cold outside. So the first step in bottling can take place at your apartment or home. All you need is a dishwasher. I like to use a top rack because it has enough for about 48 bottles. You might use less, but this place has just enough space for you to store the sanitizing bottles. So I have Star Sand Solution, and this is uh, one of the most common um, sanitizers on the market. You're gonna go about one ounce for every five gallons of uh, water that you put in here. So we're gonna take this, I already have it pre-measured out. We're gonna pour it in and then simply fill it up with water from your sink. So here's a quick tip. Before you dump everything into your sanitizing bucket, I like to create a small bowl of sanitizing solution and dump all my caps in there. That way I don't have to reach my arm in and get it all sanitized. Because trust me, I take more than one bath a day, if you know what I mean. So our pot of sanitizing solution is going to actually help us throughout today and our process. It helps with the bigger items, which I'm going to put in like this. That way it gets to soak for a bit. And then eventually this will also um, pose for when we do our bottles. We'll dip each bottle in, and I actually like to do two at a time, which I'll show you later. But what I like to do here is rotate and make sure the sanitizing solution at least makes, makes contact for about 10 seconds and then submerge what can be submerged while you're doing other things in your bottling day. Five minutes in the video. A lot, lot better with this guy right here that I made. I made this. I made this. I didn't buy it, I made it. <laughs> wondering if my hat matches my gloves yes they do so before you start sticking your hands into this star sand solution I'd recommend you put on some disposable gloves or just some latex dishwashing gloves because it's really gonna save your skin from getting torn up from all the caustic chemicals that are present in there is it necessary Absolutely not. I've stuck my hands and my arms in plenty of solutions like this, but overall it's better if you have a barrier of protection to help save your skin. So right now, I'm gonna make sure every surface is coated. What I like to do is put my hand here to create a little vacuum. Quit playing with your dinghy. And put it just like a straw, if you put your finger on a straw in your drink, it's gonna keep the solution in. We're gonna make sure that everything is good to go before we siphon the beer into our bottling bucket, which is right here. You're right. So we're about to siphon the beer into the bottling bucket. But first, you might be wondering, why do we have these random shirts tied around the carboy? Let me tell you, any type of light, whether it's UV light or sunlight, it's going to affect the beer and it can eventually lead to skunking, which is what you don't want. So what I like to do is I tie a bunch of shirts around, especially these plastic ones, and basically it helps protect our lovely citrusy IPA from becoming penetrated with that skunk, because we don't want dank in this right now. 
Actually, no, I'm not gonna do that. So I'm gonna end up knocking it over. We're gonna pour a little sanitizing solution into the bucket. Doesn't have to be much, just a bit. Now we're gonna shake. You wanna make sure the entire surface of the bucket gets coated with the solution. I like to just shake it and I like to see how close I can get from letting the water and the solution come out. Yeah, I'm not gonna let it go when I'm done. You know what I mean? Yeah. Don't mess, this is important. Always make sure your bottling bucket is set to off. Too many times have I spilled unnecessary beer. You don't want that. Let's see what it smells Holy. like, Thomas. <sighs> oh, it's a formidable scent. It stings the nostrils in a good way. Yeah. Brian, I'm going to be honest with you. That smells like pure gasoline. So we left a few hoses at our other brew site. And now we have to use every means possible. So what we've done is we've looped this short uh, siphon hose through my fanny pack into the bottling bucket, and I hope this works. So stay tuned. <laughs> Give this a couple pump. No, no, it's not gonna work. Gun pump. Okay. This should be fine now. Sometimes you need a helping hand of a friend. That's why they always say, don't brew without a buddy. It's time for the announcement. Okay, people, tomorrow morning, 10 a.m., Santa's coming to town. Santa! Oh, my God! Santa here? I know him. I know him. So, with each brew day comes experience. There's a lot of trub on the bottom. Trub is any sediment or hop particles that fall out during the process. And we are siphoning all the, all the beer off the top of this trub so that it doesn't fall into the beer we end up bottling. By tilting your carboy, you are allowing more of the good beer to stay into the siphon, which is going to allow a better and cleaner bottling experience. Trust me. The best siphoning I've ever done. Hell yeah, brother. So based on the volume of beer, which is about 3.8 gallons, we concluded that we needed about four ounces of priming sugar to add. And this is gonna help carbonate our beer once we add it to the bucket. Here we go. Good. So once the solution starts boiling and the cloudiness disappears, you can go ahead and take it off the burner that's going to take about two to three minutes. We're going to set it over here. Let it cool before you add it to the actual beer. You want the temperatures to be in the same range. So now, here we are after about 45 minutes of sanitizing. These are the last two bottles. We're dumping in. And once we're done dumping, we're going to put them right in here into the rack. And as you can see, everything is going to just air dry for a bit. And then we're about to use the bottling wand. Go. All right, so right now what we're doing is we're equalize, equalizing the pressure from the bottle to the bottling bucket. Soon this line will fill with beer and the bubbles will actually come out as air right here. So what we're doing is we're letting this bottle fill. Air in the line will push out the bubbles and soon we'll have a beer 
There we go. You see that burp? It's like you're burping a baby. Letting all the gas escape. Once you see a little bit of foam, you'll release. So my friend here has a bottling cap apparatus. We are going to take a bottle cap and then place it in the bottling cap apparatus. We will then put that said cap on the beer, press down firmly with both hands, but not too firmly. We've shattered a, we've shattered a couple bottles like this. Once the cap is on, you will then store beer for two to three weeks. They've done studies, you know, 60% of the time, it works every time. That doesn't make sense. And then crack and enjoy. Take it real soon.